I wanted to uh, go through hands-on project 1-3 because I think there's something different in 1-3 than, than what it says in your book. And this is going to happen from time to time, right? Things change, versions change, uh, but what, what the important thing is, it's not that the exact button click or the exact result is the exact same with the software. Uh, as it might be in your textbook. There might be some troubleshooting, there might be some version changes that you're going to go through from time to time. That's fine. It's not It's not going to change the results. If it changes the results, then we have something forensically wrong, right? And that's a big problem since this is our forensics course. So the, the results shouldn't change, uh, but some of the verbiage or some of the menus may change depending on which version you're using. So. Again, I'm going to jump into uh, Hands-On Project 1.3 here. Uh, I think I have version 4.15 of Autopsy installed on this machine. And so, in the textbook, they use version 4.3. There's not a huge change between those versions, but there is, you know, there, there are going to be slight variations. So I think when we get to the report and we're trying to either tag or bookmark or follow up, I think the context menu is going to be a little bit different. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in and see what that is. Uh, so let's see. So first it tells me to start autopsy for Windows and create a new case. When you're running most forensic software packages, you're going to want to um, run these as administrator. So what I will often do when I'm uh, you know, setting up my software is I'll just go ahead and set the shortcut icon to just always run as administrator. Now for autopsy, it doesn't tell us that we need to do that for this, this machine, uh, but I just know from experience that running as administrator when you're using FTK or in case it, it's, it's required. And so I, I go ahead and run most of my forensic software as administrator unless I'm giving some instructions not to I just that's just the way I do it all right so now this when I run it it will run as administrator so let's go ahead and start this and again different software uh, packages or require different amounts of, of uh, hardware resources uh, this machine I, I'm on right now is an old machine, but it has decent resources. Uh, so it, it's going to depend on the machine that you're running the software on, how long it takes you know things to, to start. Uh, but that was all in real time there. I didn't edit anything out. All right, so I'm going to create new case. So give it a name and a path. Next. Give it a case number. Enter this op optional information. This will be stored in the in the the case report. So I always recommend putting this information in. It can be tempting to get lazy with this and just ignore it or fill in dummy data well dummy data is okay uh, for our purposes but I really encourage you to put information in here because it will be important later on when we uh, do our report so hit finish for this particular exercise we're going to be looking at an image or a VM All right so we're going to select next browse and now we're going to go back to that folder and we're going to select the Chapter 1 Project 3 E01. Open. Select Next. Now we're going to configure the ingest modules. Ingest modules are the different type of processing that you want done to the data source that you're adding. So we're adding an EO1 file, some, uh, an image that's been acquired from some sort of file, some sort of machine and this is what types of analysis do we want the software to run when we put it in here so the more things that we check here uh, the more it's going to do some work on them 
and the, the less we check here, the less work it's going to do. So the less we might be able to see later on in our reporting, uh, but it'll be faster now. Uh, but what we may end up with eventually is we may want to see something that's not available because we didn't configure the ingest models, uh, modules uh, to do the analysis at, at this point. So it's uh, pay for it now with, with time or pay for it later uh, with having to go back and, and add these in here. So let's set these as uh, the exercise in the textbook asks you to do, which is select all. Okay, and we'll hit next and finish. And so it's going to take a few minutes for it to go through and it'll give you a status bar here in the lower right corner. And so right now it's at 0% you'll start being able to see some of the results of, of the analysis uh, as it's available. So if you look at uh, stuff up here like extracted content, X, uh, XF metadata, you can see that that number started at zero and it's, it's grown. So what I'm going to do for uh, resource utilization of, of this machine is I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to let this zero percent get uh, at least uh, a good bit through. I'll, I'll see how long it takes. Okay, so on my 11 year old computer with again decent resources, I think I have 32 gigs of RAM and a, an 8 core processor, but it's 11 years old. It took a little, about, about four minutes or so. Alright, so next it's asking me to open the tree viewer, which that's what this pane over in the left is and it wanted me to expand views by file type by extension and then select images All right in the results viewer pane which is over here this is your results viewer you see this 144 results scroll to the right if necessary until modified time column is in view so it wants me to find all of the files uh, created in April and then you can navigate through this using your arrow key you'll see these with the little red X that means something's been deleted right? and so sometimes you get some of the metadata or uh, you can get some different information here see if there's other occurrences and get some of the hex code uh, so. but again we can use our, our arrow key and scroll through. Okay, so it wants us to scroll through the different uh, items that were created in April of 2006. So we've done that. And let's see, so it says press control click for every file that has a photo of a boat or part of a boat. Right click the selection to point to tag file, then quick tag and follow up. So let's see if we can find a boat. So there's one. There's one. There's one. So let's see if we can do these all together and add file tags. And we want to do a, let's see, want to tag, quick tag follow up. So in, in your book, it tells you to go through all these steps of go to these files click tag file quick tag follow up and this new version this is a small little change but essentially I can highlight all these files right click just hover over add tag files and the quick tag option is already just listed here so I can click follow up right and so that tags those for follow up later now if I want to go to the tree pane viewer over here I can look at my tags and so I can see what items are listed in follow-up so those items are listed there. If I want to go back and I believe if I want to create a new type of tag let's see if we can go here add a file tag we'll say a new tag and we can say um, case 2 Jones right so there's another case I'm working on for that uh, and then we'll 
will say indicates it's notable I believe that's going to bring it back up so that there will be something that we can add to it all right so now I've added this you know this exclamation point if I do the same thing here and I say add a file a new tag and I'll say case three Smith I'm not going to call this one notable and I bet I do not get the exclamation exclamation mark All right I just get the kind of I guess that looks like a, a yield sign but what you'll also notice is as I've tagged these items it popped up over here in my tags and later on when I go to my report I can start finding these th you know finding these things and adding them to my report also I can use this in different areas so I have we'll say videos and whatever this video is I can now use one of those existing tags I can say add tag and then we'll call it one of these uh, these categories that I've created so we'll add this one to Smith and again you'll see that it's created that I can sort if this something is okay so the the yellow triangle means it's interesting and the uh, red exclamation point means it's notable and if I wanted to add comments again same thing so I'll add this one to Jones and then say I wanted to change that so I can, I can do it either right here or I can go over here go back in here can tag and comment so again I can keep it on Jones or move it if I need to and I can say this shows the white vehicle involved in the hit and run you know whatever so now you'll see that when I'm looking at it in the tag view it shows me the tag shows me the original tag which I can get rid of if I don't want that one so I can remove that one because I already have it tagged here I don't need it showing up twice so I have the file the file path plus my comment now if I go back and view it in the file extension you'll see that not only do I have my little exclamation point but now I also have a, a comment on there so when I'm viewing it different views I'm going to get different pieces of information All right, so we'll go ahead and finish out the rest of 1.3 so it wants us to now create a report so we're going to generate report and we'll tell it to give us an HTML report All right, and let's see configure artifacts let's see we'll give this thing a name we'll say chapter 3 investigation and depending on what type of report you select from this list here you're going to be able to display different types of information uh, so some reports generate uh, better or more readable uh, file paths or thumbnails or, or different things so it's really going to depend on what you need of what type of report you're going to create right. and in here configure results so here it wants us to show the tagged results and since I've created multiple different tags mine's going to look a little bit different than yours but we'll go ahead and select finish going to create the report here and then it will open in your your browser All right and so this is what the report looks like it's an HTML file if you were going to share this file with someone what you would need to do is zip the the um, the HTML folder as well as this HTML page for it to work because when I go to tagged files it's going to give me links these links are going to lead to pictures that have essentially been exported out of my evidence file into uh, the HTML page right so I can see a thumbnail view here I'm a big fan of uh, adding thumbnails to reports especially if it's something that involves any sort of visual evidence 
I, I think when you're talking about a, a photo, uh, it's a little bit different than when you're showing a photo. And with the HTML, uh, another advantage, so we have some AVIs in here. When I click that, you'll see it didn't open. Instead, what it did is it downloaded the file on the computer I'm viewing it. Now, it opens it in my media player, and the information's here. But again, if I was going to transfer this over to somebody else, I need to give them not only the HTML file, but also the folder that that contains all of that information. So it's saved in, oh, it's saved in my work folder, that's good. So let's see if we can go to that work folder and find that, just to give you a, a look of what's in there. All right, so, here in reports it's not only this page here but it's also the content and then in that content you can see there's lots of different uh, navigation that's gone into creating that including the thumbnails of the evidence that we've tagged including the originals so that we can play that video or we can view these files in a larger size than we could view them if we were just looking at thumbnails it's included the items that were in follow-up, so it's organized them in here. Uh, items that were we tagged with Smith or Jones gives me this page because sometimes when I click through the the HTML report, I'm actually looking at multiple different pages, right? It's not just one. So if you look at my file bar up here right now, I'm on report. If I go to keyword search, which we didn't do any keywords, if I go to case summary, uh, all of that is actually different HTML files right so that's it for this one I just wanted to show you that sometimes things are going to look a little different but it shouldn't be a major jump for you to be able to figure it out thanks